Music isn't as simple as a songwriter getting one message across to the listener of a song. People bring their own backgrounds, their own viewpoints, their own opinions to form their own interpretation of a piece of music. Born in the USA can be a patriotic American anthem to some, and it could be an anti-war song to others. But rarely does it become so obvious where two versions of the same song can have entire different meanings. In 1994, Trent Reznor produced a deeply dark and disturbing piece of music that reflected his mindset at that time. It was a bleak look into the psyche of a young man desperately struggling with identity, drug addiction, and depression. A few years later came a cover of the song, but it wasn't another young up-and-coming rock band with their own version. It was a man near the end of his life, a man who had largely faded from being the country music icon he once was. What was unexpected was the new meaning this man brought to Trent's original lyrics, and even more so, how much extra weight and emotion this man added. The man was Johnny Cash, and it became his own interpretation of the song Hurt. By the early 90s, Johnny Cash had fallen from grace. He spent much of the 1980s increasingly marginalized, chasing trends instead of setting them, and ultimately, Columbia, his record label of 25 years, dropped him. At the same time, he was recovering from a drug addiction relapse and health problems started creeping in. Johnny's future in the music business was looking bleak. It was after a show in 1992 where Johnny was approached by a young and hot record producer with an idea to help revitalize his career. Def Jam Records co-founder Rick Rubin was at that show and saw a still vital artist who didn't deserve an early sunset. Rubin offered to sign him, but Johnny was cynical at this point. Why would Johnny sign with this rap rock producer? Well, Rick had an idea. And he said, what I would do is let you sit down before a microphone with your guitar and sing every song you want to record. And I said, you're talking about a dream I had a long time ago. What came of the relationship was the spark that led to a set of four albums throughout the 90s and early 2000s known as the American Recordings. They were all critically acclaimed and gave Johnny relevance to a new, younger generation. Johnny's wish to record any song he wanted meant that he did a lot of covers, and by the early 2000s, him and Rick had developed a method in which they decided together which ones they would end up recording. I would send him like CD of 20 songs or 25 songs. <laughs> I had hurt on one of the ones that I sent him, and he didn't respond. And usually if he didn't respond, we didn't go back to it. You know, yeah. and that one, I remember I sent it again and I put it first on the next, on the next CD. When he listened to the CD again, he didn't respond. I said, check out that first song and I really feel like that one could be good. That song Rick was so insistent on was from Nine Inch Nails. It was their hit from 1994, Hurt. In the early 90s, Trent Reznor rented out a Los Angeles house to write and record a new album. It was the famous house where Sharon Tate and her friends were murdered by the Manson family in the 60s. Reznor was not in a good spot emotionally. He was struggling with his newfound fame and his sense of identity. To cope with his depression, he wrote a brutal depiction of self-loathing and emotional numbness that begins, Hurt myself today To see if I still feel Reznor later called the song A Valentine to the Sufferer. He sings the verses quiet and intimately, followed by the chorus where it feels like Trent's releasing all the pain he feels inside of him. The bleak chorus was a reflection of how Trent valued his self-worth at the time and his deep loneliness. I've always had a sadness and a sense of abandonment, I think, haunting me and never feeling like I fit in anywhere and always feeling like an outsider. It's not rational, it just happens often. When Trent was later approached with the idea of Johnny Cash covering the song, he was understandably unsure. Not only was Hurt an extremely vulnerable peek into his insecurities, but having an old country music singer doing it might feel gimmicky. Ultimately, Trent was still flattered a man of Johnny's stature would do it, so he gave the go-ahead. Johnny's version was more bare bones. Acoustic guitar with tasteful touches of organ and piano allowed Johnny's aged and weathered voice to cut through but it's clear that age didn't take anything away from Johnny's greatness. His weakened voice allowed him to convey emotion in a deeper way, 
and you believe the wisdom he's espousing. When you're 20 years old talking about <laughs> regret, it's heartbreaking, but it's heartbreaking in a different way because you have a whole life to figure it out. When you're looking back over your life at the end of your life with regret, it's brutal. By the end, Johnny's vocal becomes distorted as you feel him get louder and more passionate about regret. His weakened voice becomes shaky. If I could start again a million miles away. What changed the meaning of Hurt and what would lift it to a whole other level was the music video. Directed by Mark Romanek, it unfolded like a mini biography, blending archival footage, home movies, and a performance as strong as the song itself. Aware that he had little time to shoot the video, Mark flew to Tennessee to meet Johnny and found the perfect location, a decaying museum built in Johnny's honor, the House of Cash Museum. In it, Mark uncovered stacks of old footage. A light bulb went off when one of the first reels he watched showed a young Johnny riding a train. There was something about the footage of Johnny as a young, vibrant man, cut to him near the end of his life in a weathered old museum, that was powerful. It really upset me, and it really affected me, and I thought it was beautiful, but it was so unlike any video I'd seen before, and so extreme, that it really um, took my breath away, and not in a good way. It, it, I, I didn't know how to handle it. Three months after the video shoot, Johnny's wife, June Carter Cash, died. Johnny himself died months later, just under a year after the release of that album with Hurt on it. It would end up being Johnny's first album to achieve gold status in the US in more than 30 years. But it's Hurt that has continued to stun listeners to this day. Hurt is a prime example of how powerful music can be. What was originally intended to be morose, insecure, and intimate was a song juxtaposed with a country legend that was beautiful, emotional, and introspective. Even though an industrial rock band like Nine Inch Nails penned this dark song that read like a suicide note, it transcended genre to prove that ultimately the song only deals in one currency, genuine, heartfelt emotion. At the end of the video, Cash, silhouetted by a harsh yellow light, closes the lid of the piano and rests his wrinkled hands on top of it. At that point, Trent's Valentine to the Sufferer became Johnny's swan song. What I wasn't prepared for was what I saw, and it really then wasn't my song anymore. You know? I would find a way.